Hey guys, welcome to day 27 of 100 ways um, to motivate yourself. So today's story um, took me a while. I don't know if it just I'm a little slow, <laughs> but I thought it was really good. And I think this might really speak to somebody. So I'm going to dive right in. So day 27 is called Create the Way You Relate. And the author talks about how in in, in number, day number seven, he talks about how relationships are everything and they are everywhere. There is no avoiding relationships on any level. You basically could be a hermit, but on some level you need to have relationships. He talks about how in his lifetime, he used to be a trainer for a lot of executive corporations. And when he would go in to do training, he would have a four um, part seminar series where he would um, train exec or train employees for these executives and the first three parts were on self-motivation and the and the final fourth part was on relationship building hi Mandy um, was on relationship building and a lot of the CEOs and things would come to him afterwards and say you know don't you have it backwards or actually before he would start don't you have it backwards we're wanting to build up um, you know customer relationships and things shouldn't you build on um, relationship building uh, as you know parts one through three, and then motiva personal motivation is number four. And he said that that's definitely not the case. That's not how you should do it at all because um, team building and customer relations are surely more important than self-motivation is what the CEOs thought. And the author went on to say that um, he stood by his ratio of it being three and four. We can't relate to others if our relationship to ourself is poor. So he, fed, he spent three-fourths of the time focused on self-motivation because you can't give away what you don't have. If you cannot commit to yourself and have self-love, then how are you ever going to give it away? A commitment to personal motivation comes before anything because who wants to have a relationship with someone who is not motivated in any way? Think about it. Have you ever dated somebody who just, you know, was so boring? <laughs> Maybe they were beautiful or handsome or the most athletic person, whatever, but they just had no motivation or they didn't have self-respect or self-love. It's incredibly um, unattractive to find somebody like that. And so, I don't know, I just thought that was really good. Um, in relationships, wait, let's see. When we got to the fourth part, relationship building, the focus was then on creativity. Now, this is where I learned something. Something I knew, but I kind of feel like God nudged me and said, you needed a reminder on this. The focus for relationship was on creativity. <clears throat> Excuse me. Creativity is the most neglected and yet most useful aspect of relationship building. I'm going to read this last last two little bits here and then I'm just going to get into it. Um, in relationships, most of us think that our think with our emotions rather than with our minds. Ooh, y'all, that one's deep. That is cerebral right there. But to think with our feelings instead of our minds puts us in an unresourceful state um, of being upside down. When we view relationships as opportunities for creativity, they always get better. When our relationships get better, we we ourselves even become more motivated. So what the author is saying here, um, what the author is saying here is that, you know, we get into these relationships and we get really stuck and we start to get in our own head, especially when relationships um, get a little bit older, you know, like five, six, seven years into a marriage or, you know, more. Um, and we start thinking, you know, well, there's no more romance because he's not scheduling time for me or she's not scheduling time for me. And that's where, you know, the creativity comes into play. It is not romantic to think that you need to schedule date night. You want your spouse to just all of a sudden want to date you and say, I'm taking you on this da -da -da, and we're going to go blah, blah, blah. The reality is, is 
as much as it might not be romantic, you have to be creative because how romantic is resentment? How romantic is divorce? <laughs> so the same is true for your friendships, okay? If you have a friend and you are not making time by going out of your way to really, you know, make that friendship be something, it's never going to amount to anything. They're always going to be that old friend. So you need to get creative in your relationships and you need to create the way that you relate. You need to really put time and effort into it. Just like with your children, if you want them to develop social skills, you schedule play dates. The same is true for you and any of the relationships that you have. What you put in, you will get out. Don't romanticize it and think that, you know, it's just going to come naturally. It's just going to be the way it always is. You know, when we get married, it's just going to be like when we were dating, how, you know, we got butterflies and, and we always made plans and we did things. You know, the, the more you get into it, the more of a routine it is, the more you need to schedule things, the more you need to get creative, the more you need to get to know each other, whether it's a friend or, you know, your spouse or whatever, as you've evolved and become new people. So um, I just thought that was incredibly interesting. And at the beginning of it, to use the, you know, the situation of saying that, you know, in order for anybody to be interested in you, make sure that you are interested in you. If you're not interested in you, nobody's going to be. So extend that to yourself, number one. But most importantly, when you extend it to somebody else, make time for them. Be creative. Maybe, maybe, maybe you asked God today for a sign of, you know, should I get a divorce because I, I think my husband's lazy and he doesn't ever, you know, take me out for romantic dinners. Maybe this is your sign. You do it. You be the one to schedule a date night. You be the one. And so what if you're the one who's always doing it? So then you're just the one with that strength. But the reality is, is we teach people how to treat us. And the more you teach people how to treat you, the more they're going to pay attention. Okay? So stop thinking with just your feelings and realize that sometimes you need to schedule it. Because the more you create time for somebody, the more you create a relationship. And like I said, or like the author said, you need to think with your creative mind and not just with your feelings. Because the more you think with your feelings, you're going to get caught in this vortex of, the other person not being able to read your mind. And then that's where the resentment builds up and that's where, you know, you start to just harbor all these ill feelings because the other person couldn't read your mind. I mean, let's face it, that's not fair. Um, so scheduling a date night might not be romantic, but neither is a divorce, neither is living with bitterness and resentment in your, in your heart. So get out there, do the thing, schedule the night, make time with your friends, schedule time with your friends, Invest in them, but before you realize that you have anything to give to anybody else, make sure that you're giving to yourself first. There you go. Day number 27, CN28. Bye, everyone.